I saw a friend of mine this weekend, and he gave me a piece of information. And when he gave me the information, I slapped him hard on the shoulder, and I'm like, good for you, the way that you would if, you know, someone told you that they were announcing that they're pregnant. Like, I was really happy for my friend, and, and he saw happiness on my face as I slapped him on the shoulder. And what he had said to me was, I deleted my Twitter. And I was genuinely happy for him because for a few minutes he will get out of this general poisonous addiction that is filled with a lot of funny. Honest to God, it's like going to the comedy club and having the room filled with like a poisonous smoke. <laughs> you're, you're going to the comedy club because you're there for the jokes and you just see it getting darker and darker and darker. And something I have talked about quite a bit, uh, I believe it's the globe's most untreated addiction. The fact that we're all kind of cool with if you're sitting there in, you know, on a sidewalk and you start counting the number of people who are walking past you, looking into their phones, you realize that we are an addicted people like it, that it is something that has infected the entirety of the human race and is also great fun that is difficult to quit. It's entirely like that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in this studio, I come up from my car. I discover I left my iPhone in my car. I couldn't be without it. Like the, the first opportunity, I'm flying back to my car to get my cell phone just to have it with me. It's turned off. It's face down, but I have to have it with me. It's like a security blanket. It's crazy. Put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Do you have withdrawal if you've lost your phone for a few hours, uh, because I think a lot of people would say what you're saying, that we've gotten so used to. One of the things about the addiction that's so interesting is that uh, the need for stimuli makes it so that when you are without it, for because it's changed everything. It's changed our attention spans. It's changed our need for action, our need to have multiple things stimulating us in a way that separate us from the present and an old-fashioned way of living, but I'm guessing that everyone I'm talking to understands the feeling I'm talking about, that if you've lost your phone, you're sort of like, oh, what do I now do with these spare spaces that I don't want to start thinking about some other stuff? How do I distract myself by just headed toward, heading toward some place where, uh, where I know there will be something that gives me a feeling, and I may come from it thinking it's a good feeling, but very often it ends up being a feeling and in no way in there am I examining oh I think I might be addicted to this thing in a way that's not terribly healthy you just gave me an idea that I think we should do as a show and have no phone week and just see how we deteriorate oh. as the week goes on obviously I don't or know how much better the show is I don't know if how the show might be bad and that could be funny to see too it, well it could be better or it could be worse because a lot of people get their ideas what on, on what they're going to discuss next by seeing anything breaking on social media so like, like we, I'm, I'm not allowed to speak to my family that's what for I mean. a show bit we would all have to be trusted yeah just to see what would happen to us if after a, like 4 days since all of us had our phone I just think it'd be interesting to see where we all were mentally. And my addiction, I discover, is not nearly that of some other people. My wonderful wife is truly addicted to her phone. She's Dad, you're not addicted at all, by the way. When you were talking about your addiction, most. because, Dad, you, I'll call, like, I'll try to call you, and you're like, oh, wasn't by my phone. Like, you're one of the few people in my life that sometimes I can't get a hold of you because you're just like, oh, my phone was in the kitchen. So I think of you, and you're sitting here saying how you're addicted to it. I think you're better than most are. Oh, but I, right. I, I should tell you that I have done, like, some reading about demographics and some things that are just your phone. simply happening. The iPad. Uh, the, the addiction spreads. I, I have to have some sort of device on me at all times. I need to read. Give me the bigger one. Um, that's right. My eyes aren't working as well. Give me the one that I can hold in my hand so that it feels somewhat like a book, like the old days <laughs> when people read like men. <laughs> And women. But oh, what'd you learn? Yeah, you were going somewhere. Read. Women can <laughs> read, too. I, I know. I did that because... Because <laughs> it was the olden did, days. Because right. it was the olden yeah. days. Back when women didn't have the same equality. <laughs> and qualities. Greg was writing about bowling. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, In Broward. I, I, I do want to get back to that. But however bad you think, if you're listening to this, you think you are. And you think the younger generation is. 
the amount of content being consumed by teens and early 20 dwarfs how other people are consuming content and has changed television, obviously, in ways that are overt, so overt that I will tell you that this weekend I experienced something that I almost only and exclusively experience through sports. I'm watching Peacock, and I'm tolerating a minute of commercials. And I'm thinking to myself, as it's happening, when's the last time that something that wasn't sports is something that I was viewing you know, with, Peacock Premium? Yeah. With commercials. That is a shocker. Hard times. I know. Uh, I, I, oh, Valerie said to me as it was happening, she's like, it's $5 extra a month. And I'm like, no. <laughs> hmm. I'm like, no. No, I'm not, I'm not giving what? no. Do you I'm, know how much that is a day? I have to uh, do the math on that. It's, it, <laughs> six Never cents? call me cheap again. I think it's six again. cents, something like that, right? <laughs> Never call me cheap again, by the way. If oh, you're th- no, this is principle. This isn't uh, about cheap. This is not about but you, you, What's the principle about, when you're complaining exactly? about the commercials? Um, yeah. I'm noticing something about myself that I did not know. It was a moment of self-awareness because I'm being stopped by commercials and it's been so long that I've watched anything with commercials because usually when I'm watching like multiple sports things, I don't have to focus that one of the games is in a commercial. And last night, I'm assuming most of you are like uh, we are around here where the Heat game was a relief because it was 40-point difference and so you could go watch some other things i noticed commercials when i was watching like live nickelodeon or like live disney channel with my daughter man they should not be allowed to to have commercials for children Very it is impressionable. ridiculous yeah. like these kids children want everything everything that they, everything yeah, that they everything. see on yeah. television they're trying everything. to skip like they're like the tv no. you can't skip on the tv well yeah no my right. yes they go and do try to hit the thing that says like if it's youtube and it says skip on the bottom corner they will go and try to hit but like the fact that companies can market products to children in children's programming should be investigated. This is insane. I, I must have been horrible as a child yeah. seeing all these commercials for all these toys that I wanted and there wasn't an option to not see commercials. Now when I see commercials, because kids are not ever seeing commercials, like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want that, I want that. And it's because these ads... Are marketing to children. Yeah, yeah. you got. We were desensitized by the commercials. We knew that every time creepy crawlers came on, oh, that creepy. all right, it's either Mighty Max or creepy crawlers. You got to pick one. Oh my now God. they just want it all. <laughs> creepy crawlers, by the way, easy bake oven for boys. Yep. Or you know, people that liked insects. Put it on the poll, Juju. Should it be illegal to market commercials targeting impressionable children? And you realize that when you buy the thing, oh, wait, there isn't an electrical storm that's going overhead when I play Crossfire. That only exists in the commercial. (laughs) You'll get caught up in the Crossfire. See, it used to be simple back in my day. The commercial was for a slinky. You'd see a slinky walking down a stair. Everyone that was all you needed. A slinky. Mm -hmm. All you needed. A slinky. A slinky. That's right. I need to circle back around uh, for a second to point out to both the audience and the Miami Herald that Greg Cody in an uh, earlier segment admitted to a journalistic crime. That crime may be a strong word. Misrepresentation. Trying to get him retroactively fired? I mean, I think the statute of limitations is up given that this was before words had been invented. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's correct. He was 17. The my, original manuscript. Yeah, my editors are all dead by now who <laughs> might have overseen that faux he, pas. He said, he said during the break he told me that Jake Gyllenhaal's, uh, Gyllenhaal's uh, father or grandfather uh, Uncle. worked as an executive editor at the Miami Herald. Yeah. Really? Anders Gyllenhaal. Uncle Anders. So if Greg is to be tried now, since the crime happened when he was 17, would he go to juvie? <laughs> it would be me and juvenile in a juvenile cell would be funny. <laughs> I was surprised, Billy, that you didn't have any follow-up questions. There's a Will Ferrell movie there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. On Greg Cody admitting to putting his friends, and he would do it discreetly. He wouldn't give them any winning scores. He would just tuck them in the agate yeah. type. You don't want to send uh, up a red flag. <laughs> Adam Sandler just got $70 million to make this movie for Netflix. You know how the script goes. The old person goes in. There's mean kids that are bossing this person around. They can't meet friends. There's the outcast group of friends. Then take in this old man who went to juvie for committing a crime when he was, you know, 14 or something. He then ends up learning so much about himself and Mm -hmm. becoming a better man for it. And teaches also the bully kids that 
There needs to be more understanding. Not without in the romance. World. Well, let's <laughs> now this one without romance. Please. Well, there's a teacher. Ah, yeah, but power dynamics are fine when it's a woman that's in charge, I guess. It, so he's in juvie, and somebody's asking him, what are you in for? And he's saying, I gave Paul Radke a 220 in bowling. Right. I, I made it up. I, I, I just I made it up. And uh, you're admitting to, to making something up. You're admitting that. Uh, a couple of times I did it. I'm not overemphasizing. It's a this joke. is the same as the Carissa Thompson thing. Just running what's like, didn't get the quotes he needed, so just kind of filling in the blank. No, I don't do that, but I did a couple of times sneak in the name of a couple of friends into bowling agate. Agate, for those who don't know, is the very, very <laughs> small fine, type. small type that nobody ever reads. Unless you're, it's like every year with the Miami Marathon, we run page after page of all the people who entered the marathon. Nobody gives a Unless you're running in the race, <laughs> yeah, you are not people. reading right. any of that. Yeah. Those, those people, people care. Yeah. Those people. But the, you just Random. sold a hundred papes. That's right. That's exactly For people what that wanted to see their name in front I of I mean, right. I miss the days when you ran because you were competing or you wanted to be healthy. These people that enter these marathons, now they want a medal. They want their name in the paper. How about just do it for the right reasons? Raise the money. Have the money go to whatever thing. You get your stupid, shiny medal. You need your name in the paper now, too. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Exactly. Taking up the whole street the entire day. Kind of bothering an entire city wherever it is, ruining traffic patterns for all. Like, enough's enough already. Run exactly. on a treadmill now that we're at it. Billy has it right on, man. Thank you. Spot on. Bullseye. Uh, Greg, we, we make fun of your age around here, and I just got done saying that you worked at the Herald before the invention of words. Yeah, but I slight do, exaggeration. I do, well, slight exaggeration, but I do think that we shouldn't just skip past the fact that when we were talking about commercials, you went to Slinky, and Slinky is like one of the original toys. Like, it's one of the yeah. first. Think about, stick. think about how, so yeah. There was I can't a, believe there were TV commercials. There was there a rock. There was there a rock. one we were growing up. There yeah. was a rock. There was a stick, and there was a Slinky. It's like right. one of the original oh, toys. Yeah. Chia. The Chia Pet. That's, That's right. not a toy. Yeah. Chia no, pet. but it was marketed. It's not a toy. <laughs> Chia Pet is not a toy. We can talk Sink about the slinky, slinky because the guy that invented it, thank you for your service, but you didn't invent anything. You saw a spring go downstairs and you said, that's a toy. Let me just change the metal consistency and this will keep moving. Didn't invent anything. Yeah, Again, was... thank you for your service. You were a naval officer, but wow. you didn't invent anything. You saw that? an accident happen and you capitalized on it. Nothing enough. And it's the American aluminum way. one's very dangerous. You could slice yourself open. See, I oh, like absolutely. the aluminum ones. Once they turned plastic. They lost me. Mm -hmm. But they're, I mean, very dangerous, the aluminum core. You want the metal ones. That's how you teach kids exactly. lessons. But it's the most you know satisfying I mean? sound. A yeah. good toy should have a certain amount of danger in it to teach a kid a lesson. Like a choking hazard? Yeah. What? Precisely. A good, a safe amount <laughs> like of those danger. wax army figurines. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a minesweeper stuck in your... Yeah, you know, your throat. That'll learn you. Yeah, no, exactly. The, the right. way that Billy described it was quaint. The way you, once you make it a choking hazard, now I have I I have the visions of all of your children, all of you, all four of you have have little girls, and I have now visions of all four of them choking. A well, choking hazard is aggressive. I've that's saved her life at least twice. You shouldn't be time. thinking she about still our children think, dying. She's playing she marbles and everything. Reach choking, in there, pull the thing out. Choking hazard, like that's. Yeah, no, you have to be mindful at all times. Mm -hmm. Pretty but, terrible. Yeah, pay you got to teach kids yeah. young not to choke. Yeah, I'm constantly. Chris parenting Paul never is, learned. Parenting is just like running through doomsday scenarios. What is the absolute yeah, worst yeah. thing yeah. that can happen here? Because it'll likely happen uh, occasionally, and uh, it has. You know, mm -hmm. the, the all-time classic choking hazard for me is the marble, because yeah. Yeah. it yeah. looks Amen, like brother. candy. It looks like a little round mm -hmm. thing that you, you would chew. And it's just dangerous on the face of it. You know, you don't want, nobody's going to swallow a slinky. Balloons but, are also very dangerous. Yeah. Balloons, too. Balloons, yeah. But there's very a dangerous. million dangerous. Nah, whatever happened to the marble? We don't play marbles or jacks anymore. No. Or I pogs. Mean, pe people are still playing for all the marbles, but you mm -hmm. never literally see a marble anymore. Never literally. Yeah. And imagine yeah. if the prize for a sports team was marbles. Oh, oh wow. You know? That would be incredible. I mean, they'd be like, what is this? Well, give, me, give me money. Maybe me we toy. haven't uh -huh. seen them because of you know the Patriots dynasty. Well, someone could have won all the marbles, and that may be why there are no more. If that's you're given yeah, exactly. all of something, that's even if they're point. marbles, that's pretty cool. Yeah. No. I'll take all the marbles. I wouldn't. Now I have all did. the marbles. Where are well, these too balls many marbles. of wax? 
I if I won it. all the crickets in the world, I wouldn't be happy. How do you play do marbles? What is the actual game of marbles? So, uh, like, Something with jacks where you like... You, you try to grab as many of those pins as possible yeah. before it bounces. No, that's jacks. That's, that's, that's jacks? a bouncing ball, and then you get the... With marbles, I think you fling a marble like, yeah, with your th the thumb or what. I think you, thumb. you have them in a circle, and I think you have to hit the marbles out of the circle. Oh, well, closest to an object. What? No, what that's horseshoes. Yeah. Or hand Close, grenades. Exactly right. Yeah, Close right. only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Or bocce. I played Candyland this weekend oh. for the first time in years. Old school. Mm. Overrated. Mm. It had a glow up that I don't think was necessarily a glow up. I they mean, changed it now instead of like, I remember Candyland having like a spinner or something that you had to like flick to yes. kind of figure out where you had to go. Yes. Now you just flip over a card and it tells you move one red square, move two nah, red they always squares, had the cards. one green. They always I don't had remember. The cards. I think that the cards is an advanced Flimsy game. Flimsy game. Easy hmm. to understand. Not really a thinking person's game. It's well, it's intended cards. for children. <laughs> it's also always been cards. I'm a big life guy. Ah, the game of life. I'm like really life. into life right now. Yeah. yeah. Monopoly is still the king. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. Too, yeah. too long. And you know it. Too long. Well, that's a, it's, a, yeah. it's an endurance test with Monopoly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you start off with four people, and you end up with two people. It's four hours later, and you're like, sell me Park Place for crying out loud. Exactly right. It gets to be a ridiculous face-off. Nobody wins. The game takes forever. So Everyone many loses. arguments. I it's, mean, mortgages. But, but. The banker's in, drunk. In the defense yeah. of Monopoly players, that's how endurance tests were meant to be played. You have your endurance test. You keep it amongst the people who are participating that. Not like these damn runners who need their medals and their names in the papers. I never see the name in the paper of someone who played Monopoly yesterday. And I'd argue finishing a game of Monopoly more impressive than running a marathon. Good point. I think more people finish marathons and finish games of Monopoly annually. Yep. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Annually, do more people finish marathons than games of Monopoly? Also put on the poll, bigger choking hazard, uh, marbles or J.J. Berea? I want to know from all of you, when you think of thinking man's game and not thinking man's game, when you think of the top end of what is a thinking man's game, like Chess. word association. Chess. first pick off the board. And uh, because I'm, I was talking, um, I was thinking more in terms of Trivial Pursuit, Jeopardy. I yeah. was thinking. How many action Scrabble. movies do you see where the villain is playing Trivial Pursuit? Ooh, Scrabble. Um, I understand that it's a movie. Uh, it's a movie contrivance as the thinking man's game. Game, and you may have already. When Ronaldo and Messi are getting together for a once in a lifetime photo shoot, they're not playing Parcheesi. I you ever understand. see the video of like the best chess player in the world? He like shows up super late to, to tournaments yeah, where he. Sorry. He has, like, you get a certain amount of time, and he wastes, like, 80% of his time because he's so good. Yeah. It's like a mind game he plays with people where, like, the opponent's sitting there just like, Asshole. Yeah. Eh, let's, let's look at me, this guy. Asshole. Just win the game quick. Yeah, they All say, right? You're wasting a lot of people's time. Exactly. Yeah, right. when, when you're caught dead in your tracks uh, in, in the game of life, well, not the board game of life, in yeah. the normal game of life, they say checkmate. You know, they don't say, like, yeah. you landed on park plays. Uh, you, King me. If you were listening to this and you heard a sound, Look at me, the it's because I accidentally just hit the first note of that, and it was like it it pinballed through the room. It careened, and you might have heard it and then questioned yourself, but you heard it correctly. Is marbles? Marbles is one of the least thinking men's game, right? And women think too. I know. And they people read think. too. <laughs> On their phones and I iPads. Yes, yeah. we've we've covered that. I, I'd say it's chess by a mile. Everybody's playing for second. Who knows up know there? Close. No, but how about on the low end? How about not? It, it just doesn't require he, because Billy said Candyland. Not exactly. Yeah, checkers. Uh, well, checkers. Red light, checkers, green light. I there's suppose. There's strategy with checkers. Yeah. Freeze dance. Uno. U Uno. Uno, you got it. Uno, Uno you need not. strategy. If you yeah, go into Uno. Uno without strategy, yeah, you're... Uno requires strategy. As card yeah. games, though, it's, it does. Like, Rummy 500 doesn't require a whole lot of thinking. I am Chess seeing... Chess has just got such a good publicist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Connect Four is pretty challenging. Yeah. I would love to see yeah. a big baddie in a movie playing Connect Four. Yeah. Tic-tac-toe. Don't start in the... If you start in the middle with tic-tac-toe, you're a rookie. Yeah. They just put up here a uh, uh, some video of Candyland, which suggests to me that video is now working, which means I can go back to this uh, Jake Gyllenhaal uh, interview with. Uh, it was not just Jake, but it was also Conor McGregor. They are selling Roadhouse. And you guys tell me here if you think that uh, Conor McGregor is sober here. 
No. What did Jake bring to the table from the realism when it came to the fight game? Jake's a consummate professional. 75 movies made. You know, I was, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance. Yeah, and I just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it. We had a good back <laughs> I sometimes had to remind him. <laughs> I, la I landed one punch. <laughs> Once. And, and he hit me with a door. <laughs> Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. That's yeah, true. An amazing stunt, a stunt team, Gareth Warden and Steve Brown. And they were phenomenal with us. They gave us free reign. And we've done a good job. Is that hard for you, Connor, at all? Because you've been in so many real fights to, to realize, yeah, I'm trying to make this look real, but, you know, I am acting. For me, what was hard was... It was time consuming, 18 hours on set, very little rest. It was strange to me, but, you know, the fight scenes, I was happy to give my input and my oar. And Jake, as I said, is a consummate professional. We've done a good job. This is one of the great talkers in the history of sports. Uh, he wouldn't stop moving his shoulders throughout the entirety of what it is that he was uh, saying there. I generally just worry for him when you read about the recklessness, and I don't know whether that is recklessness, whether that is taking a lot of punches, but I will tell you again, after Muhammad Ali, this is one of the great talkers in the history of sports. He's plenty excellent as a fighter, but he's more excellent as a talker. He sold his fights. I understand what he did to BJ Penn and how it is that he arrived, but he, he entered, he brought, he taught all of the Masvidals and Covingtons and all of these people in that sport who have now gotten big paydays because of their mouth. Uh, he taught them how to bluster. He was better at it than anyone. And when I see that video, I get worried for him. I get scared uh, for him. Yeah, I think the, the accent helps. The, it's window dressing to what he says. But I agree with you. He's, you know, he's a good quote. Uh, he didn't seem right there. But, again, you don't know whether that's you know, the, the whiskey he sells or whether that's uh, years of CTE. I'm just telling you that this no person idea. is very good at selling stuff. He's been excellent at selling stuff, and that was a catastrophe. Like, I felt bad for Jake Gyllenhaal sitting next to him, having to hear for the second time. He's been in 75 movies. Right. Uh, in that movie, one of the interesting things to watch is how they tried to hide that Conor McGregor's tiny. They they did it a number of different Open ways. Open stances uh, for, uh, yes. for uh, did you mean Aldo? Uh, how Conor McGregor really uh, shot him to sort him over BJ Penn. I I thought the movie was was fun. It was exactly what I wanted to see out of that type of movie. And I thought Conor McGregor was really good in playing Conor McGregor. That video is sad. Yeah. That video that we just showed because his face is clearly super red, um, and it's not because he laid out in the in the sun. His tongue is heavy. His eyes look kind of odd. You pointed out the ticks that he has. That that was a dude who's got a reputation and leans into his reputation of being hard partying. He doesn't hide that fact. That looks like a dude that was having himself a good time. Well, he, slow is what he seems. Yeah, yeah. And he's slouched. What... He's slouched. Like he he looks like that dude is at the end of a of a bender right there. That's what the appearances are. And he's had several public uh, appearances where he doesn't look like that. So I do think that that is cause for some concern there chris cody uh i think the first sighting of uh conor mcgregor and they went out of their way introducing conor mcgregor because this is the turn he will do some fighting some more fighting but his best days are behind him even though he can still get a a paycheck so this will be part of the transition into whatever his life is roadhouse made a point of saying this is introducing Conor McGregor as an actor. He doesn't appear in the movie until about an hour in. Nothing much happens in the movie until an hour in. But when he does appear, he appears nude and then gratuitously bends over. Just letting you wow. know. Now I'm intrigued. That it's was fun. His, that, it's fun. Morning. He's really funny in it. It's the best acting he did in the entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I thought it was fun. I don't know what you were looking for out of that movie, but I got everything that I wanted. Out uh, of that Jake movie. Gyllenhaal makes good choices. That's what I'm looking for. There are certain actors and actresses, there are like 10 of them, that I like their choices. This was not a good choice. No.
It was Did you ever watch Prince of Persia? I'm not saying he makes all good choices. 